What's up, my fellow Sheikers? In today's video, we're going to dive deep into the fascinating world of IPv6 protocol, specifically focusing on the IPv6 header. Now, I know what you might be thinking headers, yawn. But trust me, this is going to be an exciting journey. As you know, the IP layer is the unsung hero that enables communication between two hosts on a network. It's like a trusty mailman delivering our precious data packets from router to router until they reach their final destination. And the IPv6 header? Well, it's the envelope that holds all the juicy information our routers need. So let's rip open that digital envelope and see what's inside. First up, we've got the version field, proudly proclaiming its IPv6 identity. But the real star of the show is the destination address. With a whopping 128 bits at its disposal, this bad boy has enough room to accommodate a gazillion unique addresses. And thanks to a nifty notation system that divides the address into 16-bit blocks separated by columns, it's easy to read and understand even for us mere mortals. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. The destination address is like a cosmic compass guiding our packets to their final frontier. The first 64 bits act as the prefix, identifying the specific network our destination resides on. The remaining 64 bits are the interface identifier or IED, pinpointing the exact interface our packet needs to reach. Now, let's talk about our trusty router. It scans the destination address like a seasoned detective, figuring out which interface to send the packet through. And when the destination replies, the tables turn and the source and destination addresses swap places like a cosmic dance of data. I understand that keeping track of source and destination addresses can be a bit tricky, especially when they can swap roles between packets. Let me try to explain how the chic rule approach makes this easier to manage. With the chic rule, Instead of worrying about which address is the source or destination for a given packet, the focus is on the device address and application address themselves. Sometimes the device address serves as the source, while in the reverse direction, that same address becomes the destination. The same applies to the application address as well. By dealing with the fixed device and application addresses directly, rather than the changing source and destination labels, the chic rule simplifies things. It doesn't matter if those roles are swapping between packets. To further organize these addresses, in a chic rule, we divide the device address and application address into two parts, a prefix and an interface ID. But wait, there's more. The flow label field allows the source to mark packets as part of a specific flow, helping routers prioritize and accelerate their journey. It's like a VIP pass for our data ensuring a smooth ride through the network's twists and turns. And let's not forget about the traffic class, which helps routers identify priorities and congestion levels, ensuring our most important data doesn't get stuck in a virtual traffic jam. The payload length field tells us how much delicious data our packet is carrying, while the next header field lets us know which transport protocol will be handling the delivery like a waiter letting us know what's for dessert. Finally, we've got the hop limit, which acts as a safeguard against routing loops, ensuring our packets don't get caught in an endless cycle of digital purgatory. Phew, that was quite a journey, wasn't it? But fear not, my fellow Sheikers, for we've only scratched the surface of this fascinating world. Stay tuned for more exciting adventures in the realm of networking.